Hi, it's Rob from the Brush and Balkan. Today I'm going to be doing a quick video on how to paint scratches and scrapes on vehicles. Right, so this part of the Rhino has been painted with Citadel Macrag Blue. We're now going to be using some Vallejo Black, but any black will do it. We're also going to be using a small piece of the Blister Pack Sponge. All we're doing is we're using a tiny piece of Blister Pack Sponge. You're getting some black paint on it dabbing off the excess on the paper that's on behind there and all you're doing is you hold it up and you want to drag the sponge with the paint on directly away from the front of the vehicle so that it's dragging the scrapes away as you're taking it away from the front of the vehicle you're lifting it off slowly so that those scratches and streaks out of the black are getting thinner the further from the front that they go I also tend to do more on the front of the exhaust or any parts that jut out because if the front of the vehicle is hitting say a low wall or something like that then it's going to knock a piece out of that low wall and then as it gets further down the tank widens up around the exhaust that part would catch whatever is standing obviously depending on what it's going through that's the reason I put the scratches a bit further back like so so now that we've got the scrapes and the scratches on there all you're going to do is use a little bit of Citadel Calgar Blue to highlight the top edges of the McCrag Blue that's left under every scratch. So obviously if you're doing this in a green colour, you're going to use a lighter shade of that same green. If you're doing a red, you're going to use a lighter shade of the red, that kind of thing. But I'm doing it on the blue because I think the blue stands out quite well. So where you've got the black sections of the paint chipped away, then you have the blue to join onto it. You want to do the top edge of the blue as though the light is catching it, and that gives the impression that the paint has been scraped away, and you've got an ever so slight small ridge on the top of the paint that is catching the light and making that stand out a little bit. This is part of it which will give it the 3D effect, similar to like the paint chipping video where you see the same kind of thing, the top edge is always highlighted. That just gives it that 3D look as though there is kind of little recess behind it where the paint has been scraped away. So I'm speeding up here but you'll be able to see what I'm doing here. Although you have the sections of the scrapes where the blue joins the black, I don't tend to paint the underside of the scrapes or the underside of the blue above the scrapes, I should say, just because it would make it look like the light is hitting it from all angles. I prefer to just do the underside of it, and that makes it stand out a little bit more and makes it look like the light is coming from above. So you can see here that it's starting to give it a 3D look, which is nice, and that's the kind of thing that we want to go for when we're doing all this. You work your way around each of the sections with the scrapes on, and just add that Calgar blue to make sure that you are getting each of those top edges highlighted. I'm going to skip ahead a bit because it takes quite a while to do all these edges. And when we come back, we'll have them all highlighted. So with all those top edges highlighted, we're now going to move on to Citadel Lead Belcher. And you're basically going to fill in where the black is. However, you are going to leave an edge of black all the way around the lead belcher. Again, this is to give it that look as though there is a recess or a little ridge around where the scrapes are, where the paint has been scraped away. So I mainly use for doing this the Army Painter Wargamer Character Brush because you need one that's got a really, really fine tip. You just want to get those lines nice and straight. And also you want to keep them nice and thin towards the ends. Now if you look in the middle of that section there, there's quite a big area with no scrapes on. I'm actually going to brush paint a couple of little scrapes on there a little bit later on in the video. You can scrape it on the same way with the piece of sponge if you want to. 
but I just did a few little brush ones just to fill in that gap and then when they appear I'll talk you through them. It's basically the same system that I use with the sponge but using a brush where you're painting on the black you're doing the Calgar blue highlight on the top edges filling in with the lead belcher and then onto the rest of the colours and shades and whatnot a little bit after this. So here you can see I'm filling in pretty much all the black with the lead belcher, just leaving those black edges around it so you've got that change of level. So you've got the blue ridge where the light's catching it, then you've got a little thin layer of black, then you have the lead belcher on top of that. Again, we're going to skip ahead to finish off the lead belcher because it'll take quite a while to get it all done. And when we come back, we'll move on to the next colour. So now I've got all those scrapes painted on, I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Null Oil. I'm just going to lightly put that over each of the areas of the scrapes just to tone that down a little bit. Now, if you're having them all as fresh scrapes, you can leave them as is. And if you are doing them all as slightly older scrapes, you can do a little bit of shading using null oil, and then I'm going to use a little bit of a Grax Earth shade for a second layer just to do shade some of the lower edges of the scrapes. Well, quick coat of null oil, a very thin coat of null oil on all the silver parts will tone that down enough so that it's no longer bright and shiny. So if you don't want them to shine too much, you can put this on and that will tone it down. But you can also add a few fresh scrapes over the top of that, which I'll show you towards the end of the video. Next up, we're going to be using a little bit of Citadel Grax Earth Shade. All we're going to be doing for this is painting it along the bottom edges of some of the bigger areas just to make it look like maybe grimes collected or the bottom edges had that little bit of extra moisture and damp collect on it and it slowly started to corrode so you're giving that a slight brownish colour nothing too much because you don't want it to look overly rusty if you want it rusty I'll link up the link to the rust video that I did not so long ago. What you'll be able to see across all of the videos here is that the way I do the damage on vehicles and things like that you always want to think about where the damage is coming from. So in terms of the scrapes and stuff, if the vehicle is mainly going forwards through things it's going to have the scrapes on the front trailing towards the back. If it's going to be rusted it's going to have rust in the places where the paint is going to chip which is going to be around the front and on some of the edges and areas where water is going to collect. So I'm now going to use a little bit of Citadel Lead Belcher. I'm going to use the Wargamer Character Brush from Army Painter again. So we've got that nice thin point. And I'm going to turn it so that you are dragging the brush away from the thinner edges of the scrapes. And you're just going to use a little touch of Lead Belcher just to add some fresh scrapes to the old ones and give that a little bit of a shine through. If you want to, you can use a lighter colour than Lead Belcher. I'd probably go for maybe model air chrome if I wanted really bright ones because they will stand out. But any kind of slightly lighter silvery metallic would do the trick. But I'm just using quite dark ones here because I wanted them to be quite subdued, not too bright and not too stand out. So you don't have to do all of them, just every now and again, just do a couple of little ones so the little bits of shine show through. And once you've finished that, that's all done. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel, you enjoy the content and you'd like to support us, please head to our coffee page below where you can buy us a brew. Thanks very much.